But in terms of what I saw and why it changed my life, the first thing, as I said, was the fact that I realised we we tend to wear a mask and we don't see the real person. So there's this untapped potential that I see. The second thing is that actually when when we're in a, a, a state of adversity, there are no communication <laughs> problems, John. I don't know why we make it so complicated. I was in a garden as a refugee with a hundred other people, we all spoke different languages and we came together like a well-oiled machine. So to have this huge lesson about the fact that when you put that magnificence with other people's magnificence, then you create something incredible. That was life-changing for me. Hello and welcome to The Gift Show, a show created to help you get your future together. My name is John Burns and I am your regular host. Gift Show is for senior business executives who have been made redundant due to the COVID-19 pandemic. They want to return to full-time employment or start a business of their dreams. My guest today is Michelle Mills Porter. Michelle, you're very welcome to The Gift Show. Thank you so much for having me, John. I'm delighted to be here. Michelle Mills Porter is the founder of MMP Limited. She helps business executives to unleash human potential. She was involved in the Boxing Day Tsunami. Michelle, tell us all about the Boxing Day Tsunami and how you got involved. Well, if I can take you a step back, John, um, I was running an, an extremely successful company that I'd started myself from scratch. And it was winning all sorts of chamber awards, uh, we were the youngest company in the country to win investors in people. Um, and we'd gone from zero to three quarters of a million turnover by year three. So my partner and I decided to celebrate by going on a few holidays and, you know, and experiencing life a bit. Um, so we learned to dive in the UK and we went on a few holidays. We found ourselves in some really exotic places like the Maldives and then we took our first Christmas holiday away. We'd never been away at Christmas before. And this, of course, was in 2004. And so with our dive team from Bromsgrove, we went over to Sri Lanka um, to a dive centre that we had a partnership with. And, um, and we stayed in the hotel next door on the beach. So this is in Hikadua in Sri Lanka, which is the southwest, never reached shredded wheat, southwest coast of Sri Lanka. Um, and... Yeah, basically, we got caught a couple of days into the holiday. We caught got caught smack bang in the middle of the biggest natural disaster in our living history. Very good. And how the how did the tsunami impact you thereafter? I think um, people know that people who know that I have a a keynote called the magnificence of humanity sometimes might say, oh yeah, Michelle talks about the tsunami. Um, I might touch on the tsunami a little bit and I might tell people, you know, how terrifying it was to suddenly feel like the whole hotel had been dumped into the sea when there's water all around you and it's destroying everything in its path and you don't know how you're ever going to escape being stranded on the third floor of your hotel room with everything floating around you beneath. It is terrifying and um, and it is an, a, a really huge experience. However, what I talk about and what I do now is all about what I learned from that experience. So it's I concentrate on how we came together as a group of people in the aftermath of that tsunami. And that's really what changed my life. So I think the first thing that I can say is that I know what it feels like to feel real fear, in, you know, in the face of true adversity. And that's different to we say, oh, I'm scared of getting on stage or I'm scared of this. It, that's a different kind of fear. And when it's a, when it's a, a you know, a life challenging fear, that, that is a very different feeling. Um, and what happens, what happened to me and what happened to a lot of people I've spoken to 
is that your amygdala kicks in. So your fight, flight or freeze mode kicks in and actually your body takes over. It's quite remarkable, John. So in the midst of of thinking, oh, my gosh, what's happening? What are we going to do? Who can we help? How can we get out of this? And feeling this huge sense of of panic, your body is very calm and it, it, it does things. First of all, it ejects anything that it doesn't need. And then it goes into kind of survival mode. So you get this this competing calmness. So one minute it's like, oh, what do I need? And the other and the other part of you is like, calm, okay, let's be sensible. What do we need? And and so it's almost like your subconscious is guiding you through the process. And it's it's just remarkable. But then when you see um that what happens is in adversity, you can see straight through to the core driving forces of that person. And sometimes their behavior is not what you expect. And I thought I knew about behavior. So I thought I knew the people that I was I was there with. But actually, you see something different. You see them behaving in a different way. And you think, OK, what is this? Why are we behaving differently? And initially, I came back with more questions than answers. I was like, you know, why do I not know about behavior? When I thought someone was going to behave in a certain way and they did something remarkable or they did something I didn't expect or they weren't the grumpy person I thought they were after all. They were benevolent, compassionate, and they saved somebody's life. How did I not see this? And then you get to realize that actually in our real life, we tend to walk around with a mask on. We just fulfill the role that's required of us without ever testing our real potential. It's a great answer. And just to touch on the subject you brought up there, where you compared experience of being in a tsunami situation and wrecking ruin all around you and comparing that to a fear of public speaking. I was looking at a video there the other day, and the reason I think many people fear public speaking is they fear being laughed at or making a mistake or humiliation. In the case of a tsunami where it's life and death, that's when the real personality comes true because everybody is going to panic for a minute or two. But then the people who have control of their emotions will take control of the situation and they start looking for solutions and a way out. The person who lacks that bit of self-confidence will go into flight mode and they will need a lot of reassurance, I imagine. Just going back a second there, you talked about having a very successful business prior to the tsunami, and now you're doing a completely completely different business model. What encouraged you to start that new business as MMP Limited and looking at the whole area of behavioral analysis and uh, personality? Okay, so... um... That's really good observation, actually. And I think a lot of what we call fear is quite often adrenaline. And adrenaline, you know, is something to be challenged and used rather than feared. So I think you're completely right about that. Um, But in terms of what I saw and why it changed my life, the first thing, as I said, was the fact that I realised we we tend to wear a mask and we don't see the real person. So there's this untapped potential that I see. The second thing is that actually when when we're in a, a, a state of adversity, there are no communication problems, John. I don't know why we make it so complicated. I was in a garden as a refugee with a hundred other people, we all spoke different languages and we came together like a well-oiled machine. So the second thing is that communication is not an issue, you know. Also, collaboration is quite, it's just too big for the word. Collaboration is absolutely massive. When you see people collaborate, they can literally move mountains. So when you see people that bring out their own magnificence and they're realizing skills that had been hidden and they haven't used and they bring those out, that's great. But when they collaborate with other people, you can just move mountains. And that's something that has never, ever left me. And I'm a very independent person. So collaboration for me was never the first choice. It's not that I'm not a kind person. It's just that I get on with doing stuff myself. 
So to have this huge lesson about the fact that when you put that magnificence with other people's magnificence, then you create something incredible. That was life changing for me. So when I got back, I had so much to learn about human behavior and so much to try and discover and unpick what dissect what had I learned what is this about and so with my business I completely lost the passion for my business and I didn't understand what that was about until years later and I look back from years of of diving into learning about human behavior and what is it that that can release this magnificence within us without having to you know how can I replicate that for business owners without having to go through something like a tsunami um, and that's what I was concentrating on learning on. Um, and I, I ended up closing my business. I rehomed all my staff. I closed my business and I just learned. And I became a behavior profiler. And then I, be, I had my own um, profiling business and I had 50 practitioners that were going out and using the tools. And it wasn't long before I thought, do you know what? They're, the tools out there are not, they're not cutting it for me. They're not doing, they're not discovering what I need. I need to peel back more onion layers so that's when I decided to create my own profiles and the most important one in my opinion is essence which is a core motivation analysis so when I talked earlier on about realizing that people behave in different ways under adversity um, that's exactly what essence uncovers I also have a behavior profile called Clarity and a series of profiles called the People Reader, which allow people to understand other people and and collaborate more effectively. But going back to essence, this is the key thing for me. At the moment, going through the pandemic. So just put a question there for a second there. Uh, Michelle, you picked a lovely word out there, and it's a word that really means a lot to me, is collaboration which is a win-win situation. And as you said, in adversity, a lot of people can behave in a very collaborative mode because they have nothing to lose and a lot to gain. And they know that by working with other people, they can make a drastic situation a lot better for themselves. Another word that I love to hear is independence. I love to hear of people who say, I can make my own mind up on issues. I'm a bit different. I stand up from the crowd. I like that sort of person because they don't just formally, they don't just, they don't just follow the status quo or the crowd. They show an ability to think for themselves and to make their own mind up. And let's go back to essence. Can you define for the audience what essence is? So it uncovers our either, you can either call it core values or driving forces. Um, When I say core values, I'm talking about the things that really drive us as human beings. And these are things that are formed in in our fundamental years. And it's largely external influence. So it's the people that looked after us, the people that that brought us up, the environment we were brought up in, the culture, the religion, the situation, those all have... Um, a place in in defining our beliefs in terms of how we should act as human beings and we tend to live by those rules for the rest of our lives we find funnily enough we find that um, CEOs business owners entrepreneurs they quite often have that independence streak that I spoke about and I know that you and I share that as a a driving force Um, and some people, if they don't have that as a, as, a, as a high driving force, they might think that those people, you know, are um, selfish or, you know, or, or not inclusive. And that's actually not true because you can have a mix of core values that actually soften the edges of that. Being able to carve your own path, being able to think of new ideas and, and land on your feet and find a way through. There is nothing to be ashamed of with that at all. Um, and I think what I was... What I wanted to say, John, is that we've been going through this pandemic and you might think, how is that similar to the tsunami? But do you know what? It's exactly the same because we've all been forced into this portion, this this area of adversity. And we've all had a chance to recalibrate what's important to us, which is exactly what happened in the tsunami. You know, we've 
we've got a chance to say what's important in my life what do I really want to do and do you know John 72 percent of office workers do not want to go back to the way it was before that's a huge percentage and if if that's true if we either can't go back to the way it was before we don't want to go back to the way it was before what we need to do is we need to check what our driving forces are because being in line with those is what gives us energy and power and fulfillment it's a very good answer and just a few days ago i did the essence profile with you and i came out as being an independent person and sociable and what i like what i love about my job is i've always loved to help people and for many years i wore this mask of being an accountant and then after many years i realized there was better work out there for me helping people by coaching them to do, to get back into employment or to start a business of their dreams and to use those case studies to become a professional speaker. That's what I really like about my work, is helping people. You live in the Lickies. What is life like there? It, do you know, it's lovely. When, when the pandemic started, I thought I knew these hills the Licky Hills, you know, and I live at the foot of the Licky Hills in a little village that sounds like a symptom of COVID. It's called Cofton Hackett, uh, but it's actually, it's got quite a lot of history around it. Uh, and I thought I knew these hills. I've, I've lived around here all of my life. But during the first lockdown, uh, because it's on my doorstep, I was out there walking the hills and I found nooks and crannies and paths that I didn't know about and dis- rediscovered nature and rediscovered my local environment. And it was beautiful. I love that. I think where I live in Cofton Hackett, my neighbours are amazing. You know, we get together, we used to get together every Thursday night and sit across the street. And, you know, and, and when we were on lockdown, we were in each other's gardens and we just can't wait to get together again. So it's it's beautiful around here. But do you know what, John? That ticks another one of my driving forces. Like you, we both have aesthetic as a high driving force. And aesthetic is being able to find awe in things, to be able to find wonder in our environment. And it fulfills us. And you and I both share that. So it's not surprising that I would say, yeah, I could have answered in a million different ways, but I'm like, I'm all about nature and beauty and gosh, aren't we lucky? So that's another example of why driving forces are important. Um, And if you can identify what it is that truly motivates you, then you you also know what stresses you. And when you feel stressed, you you can put it right by going back to your driving forces and make sure that they are fulfilled. There's never been a more important time for people to to get in touch with what really drives them and motivates them and change their life moving forward. Yeah. I'm very much an outdoors person myself. A number of years ago, I decided to join a gym and I quickly realised it wasn't for me. It was just too macho, I suppose you could say. I prefer the great outdoors and, uh, you know, walking around here in the local area, looking at cattle, looking at horses in the field. And I get plenty of new energy back into my body from that because I love nature. What else would you like to say to the audience? What takeaway do you have for the audience today? I think I think it's a lesson. OK, so the lesson for me and the reason that I find essence so important is because I fell down the hole. So when I first came back from the tsunami, it took me a while to realise that I was not in alignment. I told you that, but I can tell you exactly what it looked like. I remember being in my boardroom and looking in a trophy cabinet and all of these awards around me. And and I saw the reflection of somebody that I didn't recognise. It was, you know, a fame hungry little girl trying to prove herself something, prove herself to the world. And I didn't understand who that was. That didn't fulfill me. I didn't need that. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to help people. And so I threw myself into the charity that we created and became the PRO. And that gave me real fulfillment. Now, because I still ran the business, this being in in conflict with my real driving forces caused me to become ill. 
I didn't just become ill. I became extremely ill. And that, I believe, is is due to not listening to what I needed for fulfillment. So not only is it a good idea to make sure you're aligned with what drives you for energy and for fulfillment and happiness and all of that stuff. Actually, it's dangerous not to because it can lead to stress, anxiety and even illness, as it did in my case. Thank you for that answer. And to sum up the whole interview today, if I was to say to any business executive who's been made redundant due to the COVID-19 pandemic, is to use their redundancy time wisely and ask themselves, what am I doing? I'm really using it to drive my core values. If it's not driving your core values, you have to look for new opportunities or new business ideas that will be aligned with your core values. This concludes the gift show for today. I'd like to thank Michelle Mills Porter for sharing her life experience, in particular, the tsunami experience. I'd like to thank you, the audience, for your participation today. I hope I've been able to answer all of your questions. If there's something I've missed out on, my contact details will be on screen at the end of this video. Thank you.